Welcome back to the Racing Dudes YouTube channel. Happy fourth weekend, guys. I'm here today to talk to you guys about the Indiana Derby that's happening this Saturday, July 6th. Uh, last week, we didn't fare too well with our bets. We completely missed the Stephen Foster exacta. Um, with the long shot Kings Barn, that really hurts my heart. But I'm positive that we are going to bounce back this week. So after this video, make sure you check out the Racing Dudes Best Bet page on their website that will be available on Saturday. I'm going to have the exactas for the Belmont Derby, the Belmont Oaks, the Delaware Oaks, and Handicap. And we can't forget the, about the Cornhusker at Prairie Meadows. But back to the Indiana Derby, we have eight horses going a mile and 16th on the dirt track. To start off, we have the number one wood court. He is four for 12 lifetime. He has been in some great stakes where he finished fourth in the Rebel, sixth in the Jeff Ruby, then went to the Illinois Derby where he finished in third place, but behind the winner by over 16 lengths. I just think of the fact that his last three races, he lost by over 26 lengths combined just tells me that he's not really ready for this type of race. The number two is Stronghold. He comes back after finishing seventh in the Kentucky Derby. Before that, he won the Santa Anita Derby against Imagination. If you all remember, Stronghold was my long shot for the Derby after his Santa Anita Derby performance. But looking back, Imagination, the second place runner that day, hasn't done anything so maybe that field was not the strongest. He is shipping in from California to Indiana. So travel always does concern me a bit. Um, he has the speed and the class to win this race because if you cross out the Kentucky Derby, he's never finished worse than second place. Um, the number three is Real Men Violin. Now, I believe that his best races were as a two-year-old. He beat Track Phantom, got second to Honor Marie. But since then, we really haven't seen a whole lot from him. In the next two G2 races, he finished off the board by a lot, like a lot. Like I'm talking 60 links between two races. He then went to the Illinois Derby where he did finish ahead of the number one wood court. But then he went to the Texas Derby and finished seven links behind EJ won the cup, who is in this race as well. The number four is Kitty Hawk. This horse is entered in three different races for Saturday, including an allowance at Ellis Park. So I think this horse scratches out of here. If not, we're just not going to play him anyways. I don't care. The number five is Informed Patriot for Steve Asmussen. I think that they had high hopes for this horse after breaking his maiden, then getting third in a G3. But since then, he didn't place in any other graded stakes. He did win an ungraded stakes at Oaklawn, but then came back and got ninth in the Texas Derby. I just think that this horse wants some shorter distances, so I don't like him here. The number six is Sir Grayland. I'd like to start off that me and Magic had a conversation yesterday that we just don't like this name for this horse because the horse is not gray. Anyways, um, this horse is very lightly raced. He has won two of his three starts, but has not been out of an allowance race. So this is a big step up. His buyers do seem consistent in the fact that he won by over five of this distance last month is a little intriguing. The number seven is EJ won the cup. Now, this is another California shipper. He is three for 10 lifetime. But it seems like in his last four races, he kind of really put it together. He has gone three for four behind Stronghold in the Santa Anita Derby, then came back with his best buyers of his career in the Texas Derby. He's been training very well, but he's also never been out of the Southwest. So shipping into the Indiana does make me leery, like I said before, with Stronghold. The last horse is Dragoon Guard. I guess I'm saying that right. Um, he is your morning line favorite. He has gone two for three and won his last two races pretty easily. Now, one was a main special weight. The other one was an optional claimer. So jumping up to a G3 is a step up, guys. If he can keep up his speed and pace going longer distances, then he could be a real threat here. But he hasn't gone two turns, so that gives me a lot of question marks, especially when he's the favorite. So with all of that said, I have to go with my number two stronghold. I think that he has the class to take the field. So since we are already taking one favorite, we can't take two favorites for our exacta. 
So I'm sorry, Cox, I'm not picking you. So underneath Stronghold, we're going to go with the number seven, EJ won the cup, who won the Texas Derby ahead of Real Men Violin. So that is a $10 exact a box, two seven. Now I'm going to do a smaller ticket like I always do, and I'm going to do a two seven six box. Um, I'm going to give the six a, long, a shot to kind of upset this field because we can make some real cash if he wins. So thanks for tuning into the Racing Dudes YouTube channel. Make sure you are subscribed so you never miss any of these videos. Um, let me know below who you think is going to win the Indiana Derby. Also check out the Best Bets page, which will be live on Saturday. Have a happy fourth, and until next time, good luck.